Hey everybody and welcome back. This is part three of a four part series. I explain the role cybersecurity plays in the digital world uh, with the ultimate goal of just conveying the significance of adopting the shift left mindset among product teams. In the previous videos, we discussed the presence of digital boundaries amongst countries, the laws and policies that come with navigating them, and ultimately the impact that has on business, uh, governments, citizens, and all that. So you can check the link above to uh, check that out. But in this video, we're just gonna have a continuation of that and we're just gonna address the question that came out of that video, which was how do companies navigate compliance with uh, the ruling government? And as stated in my previous video, the real reason behind cyber policies uh, again, link up above, uh, go watch it. Cybercrime is a thing. It's an undeniable presence in the digital space. And as a consequence, countries have created laws and policies to govern how to identify and punish uh, such crime. And so companies that operate within that, com that country's digital space, including their employees, must adhere to these laws when interacting with the country's citizens or other entities that are within that um, country or even those that are outside of that country. So what companies usually do is they adopt what is called like the industry standard and best practices to help them maintain compliance within the digital environment. And basically industry standards represent the baseline requirements for security controls, configurations, or even uh, processes that a company should implement uh, based on its business operations. And so these standards are derived from cyber laws and cyber policies and regulations that are self set forth by the country's national and sometimes regional or local or local governments, uh, especially for the United States. So you have you have uh, counties and cities and towns and all that. So there might be something specific in that local government. Um, but basically, they're used as a minimum requirement to protect. Uh, user information, um, as well as other types of information. I don't want to go too deep in the weeds with that. But in order to ensure the compliance uh, with industry standards, obviously, like companies typically establish like uh, governance and compliance teams. And these teams, in conjunction with the security team, enforce policies and standards for protecting the company's digital assets against cyber attacks as well as keeping them legally uh, within the parameters that the government has set forth. And so I've mentioned some of these uh, standards and policies in a previous video, but I'll just give you some others too. So examples of these standards used by these teams would include, um, especially security team, Open Worldwide Application Security Project or OWASP, which basically organizes the top 10 most common mistakes in uh, cyber attacks against web and mobile, and I think they just added API, um, but web and mobile applications in addition to API. Um, and so you also have the payment card industry compliance standards, which is also known as PCI compliance standards, which is mandated by credit card companies to help ensure the security of credit card transactions in the payments industry. And like I said, there's many others I've mentioned in um, previous uh, videos. So uh, you go check out part one and part two of the series and you'll get, you know, a couple more. Um, but there are several rules within these standards, right? You have PCI compliance and you have uh, compliance that is for health information as well as just personal, ident uh, personally identifiable information as well as PCI. There are so many rules and regulations within those. And, you know, not all of them may apply to a single business. Uh, and for this reason, the governance and compliance, as well as the legal and security teams tend to review um, these uh, rule sets or and see which one is most in line with the company's operations. And they're making sure that they're within um, they're in compliance. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> Um, and in the final part of the series, we'll cover some of the strategies that these teams, specifically the application security team or the security team, because that's what we're here focusing on. Um, but we'll cover some of those strategies 
that the, uh, the AppSec team use in, uh, in order to implement these company policies and standards. And so I'll see you then in part four. Hey everybody, I just want to take some time to talk to you about Cyber Scrolls. Cyber Scrolls is a newsletter dedicated to those in product security, whether you're in QA, um, product manager, developer, software engineer, Cyber Scrolls is meant for you. Why? Because we're going to talk about things that pertain to software security. That includes uh, third party libraries, that includes best secure coding practices, business logic, top OWASP oh, top 10, things of that nature. Um, and if you're a developer, there's even more fun stuff like coding challenges and vulnerable code snippets and trivia um, to really go through so that you can kind of understand what the AppSec team or application security team is talking about when it comes to shifting left or preventing hackers. So it's really a newsletter that's dedicated to anybody in, in, in uh, the product security team and hoping to get them a better understanding of the whole shift left process, as well as what it takes to create a secure development life cycle. So if you haven't already signed up, feel free to click the, the this description, the link in the description below, or go to www.coreviewguru.com to sign up for the newsletter.